Hello and welcome to my brief introduction to multi-platform arcade game designer. This video hopefully will show you just a little bit uh, about how to use the tool and um, how to get up and running and how to get a game started. So uh, what I've done is I've brought up the uh, tool here, multi-platform arcade game designer. This is how you'll see it when you first uh, run it. Um, so let's just uh, get started. Let's select the spectrum standard for the machine just to uh, get started with a little project. Um, and the first thing we'll want to do is look at the um, window size. Um, now this is where you set out your screen layout. Uh, we've got the main window area here. Um, we can move that around if we like. We can uh, just select that and move it around with the cursors. Uh, we can rescale it. Um, if we want we could just change the size of it. Uh, it'll come up with a prompt to ask us if we're sure about that, um, but we're not going to do that for the time being. We also have a number of other displays we can put on there if we like. Um, the score, we can toggle that on or off, lives, high score. I mean, we can move all of these things around as well, um, just as easily. Uh, timer, if we want, or energy bar. But we'll not bother with any of that for the time being. So let's then move on to the blocks. Now the blocks are the background um, that gets uh, displayed on, on, on your screens um, every time you move from one screen to another. So we start off with two very basic blocks, the, the background uh, blank black um, block and um, a very simple uh, brick pattern, a um, little brick wall. So let's just add an extra block. We do that with the X key. And then you can see that we've immediately got block number two, an empty block type there. And we can um, have a play around with that, uh, changing the colours uh, and drawing some simple blocks like that. Uh, we can then change the type by clicking on this um, area here. So fodder block, deadly block, there's a reasonable variety of, of block types um, to use, but I think we, will, we want a, a wall block here for this one. So let's come out of this. So that's another block added. What else do we have? We have sprites. Now, um, let's change the sprite colours. Right. Uh, what we want to do is set up some basic sprites just to uh, test the tool. So let's just do something very, very simple with some sprites here. Let's do a little player sprite or something like that. Just mirror that and yeah, draw a little basic little box for one sprite. Now if we want to add another sprite, we press X. That adds another sprite. Um, we can add extra frames to each individual sprite by pressing F. I'm not going to do that here um, because we're not going to do anything too sophisticated like animation just yet. Um, but let's just do a very simple basic 16 by 16 circle. The old classic 16 by 16 circle. Okay, uh, what else do we want? Well, let's have another sprite. Uh, let's just do a little sort of X pattern or something for that. We can make that a nasty or something. Something for the player to avoid. Oops. You can change the colour in the sprite editor, by the way, on the spectrum, just by clicking those boxes there, just as we did with the block editor. Okay, so we have three sprites now, zero, one, and two, three different sprites. So we can start off with those now. Uh, let's go to the screens editor where we want to set up our screen layout. So let's do something very simple. Draw some wall blocks at the bottom of the screen. Notice the um, coordinates are shown in the panel, which is helpful. Uh, let's select our new block now. Where do we want to put those? Let's put those up here, shall we? Uh, maybe a little platform here. 
and maybe one there. Okay, so now we have um, a basic screen. So the next step is to put some sprites on it. Let's go down to the sprite positions editor. So um, let's put let's have the square our first sprite as the player. So we'll put him there. Or shall we? We can we can move these sprites around just by clicking on them again and then move them elsewhere. So that's reposition that sprite. Now notice it defaults to saying player respawn. Um, that's because uh, the tool doesn't yet have any examples of, of this sprite image and, and what its type should be. So it defaults to player respawn. Again, when we select the next sprite it says player respawn. But if we now click on this um, and change the type with R and T, we can change the sprite to any particular sprite type. So that would uh, be sprite type 1 which would use player event 1. More of that later. Um, and then let's just have one of these X's and put that one, say, there. OK. So, so we could have a player sprite there. That's player respawn point. Sprite type 1. OK, so we'll have to make that a collectible, I think. And ooh, that's defaulted to player respawn. We don't want that. So let's click on that area there and change that to sprite type 2. So now we've set those up, what we do is we go to Tools and we can go to the Script Generator. Now this is a particularly powerful um, part of the tool. Here we see all the individual sprite types we can have. Player controls and sprite types 1 to 8, those are all the sprite types we could have uh, chosen in the uh, Sprite Positions Editor. And here, in this column, we have the uh, behaviour that we want that sprite to um, exhibit in the game. So, going to the player controls, we can have Rocketman controls, which would be like a Jetpack or Cybernoid, uh, where the player automatically moves down when he's not moving up. He can move left and right uh, and fire. Uh, Top-down controls, that's sort of more of a maze game or... Sokoban or Attic Attack, you know, the top-down controls, up, down, left, right. Platformer is standard left, right and jump. Ladders and levels is left, right and up and down ladders, um, the sort of movement you'd see in a game like uh, Space Panic, for example. Left to right shoot em up, well, that's sort of Zynapse, um, Mortivica, <laughs> R-Type, that sort of thing. Um, and those are the player controls, so I think we'll go with Rocketman controls for this one. Um, sprite type 1, um, so that was our first sprite we added, I think we made that a collectible. So let's go through the rest of the sprite types. Um, we can have a sp uh, static collectible which just sits on the screen animated uh, and just waits, uh, checking for a collision with the player when it is picked up by the player, the player gets a bonus, uh, and you can change that. Uh, I think it defaults to so many points, and, uh, but you, you can change that to um, award the player some other sort of bonus. Pushable block, um, those are blocks that uh, the player can push around, Soko Band style. Um, bouncing Nasty is just a nasty that bounces diagonally around the screen. Horizontal Patrol, that's very Jet Set Willy Manic Minor-ish, it will move left and right. Uh, and change direction when it hits something solid or when it reaches the end of the platform. Vertical patrol is rather like the horizontal patrol, just goes up and down and changes direction when it hits something solid. Ladder pursuers, those are the sort of enemies you want on a screen where you've got a ladders and levels type game. Um, so they just wander around the platforms and up and down the ladders chasing the player, just basically wandering around aimlessly most of the time. Um, homing nasty. Uh, that's a, a sprite that homes in on the player slowly. Um, that's a clever little uh, routine. What it does is it uh, tells the um, player controls to store the player's coordinates in a global variable. Um, if you don't understand what that means, never mind. Um, it generates the code for you automatically anyway. 
uh, so that it can it, it will pick up the um, the players variables from from those players position from those global variables and uh, home in on those. Uh, the static nasty is um, like the static collectible, but it's just a deadly to the touch. Uh, player bullet. Uh, now that's useful um, if you want to. If you have a you have a control method that uses a fire button, uh, then the player setting up a, a player bullet in one of the sprite types will um, tell the script generator to use um, to spawn a sprite as the bullet instead of um, using lasers. So you can do that. You can. Select the left and right directions for the sprite as well while you're at it. Um, but we'll, uh, in fact, I think we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Um, player satellite is a, a sprite that um, orbits another sprite. It goes round and round. Uh, so a little bit like the power-ups you get on Cybernoid. Um, and uh, uh, that sort of thing. Um, if you wanted, you could change it uh, with a couple of uh, lines of code so that it would orbit um, a boss sprite, for example. So you, you'd have a big boss with orbiting sprites, so that would be fun to do with, with that um, event type. So those are the other event types that we have available. Um, but you can always write your own if you're not happy with those or change the existing ones. It's up to you. I think what we'll do is we'll have a... Uh, now what did we do? We had a collectible, so let's use the player satellite for that one. Uh, and then the nasty sprite, sprite too, wasn't it? So let's use the bouncing nasty for that. Um, so that will do. We'll take off these um, sprites because we've already defined the sprite images on the sprite position screens. Um, and we'll just generate the scripts for those. Now it will prompt us because that will erase the existing scripts. So we'll say yes, we are sure, and then it'll tell us to save the project to export source to see our new scripts. That's no longer applicable because we can just go straight to events and look at our script. And here we see it's generated the script for the player. Um, up, down, left and right, and of course fire, but it's using the laser at the moment. If you, see, you can see that, it's um, using the laser which is one of the particles. Um, so if we didn't want to do that, we could go back to the tool, the script generator, um, and set up a player bullet sprite instead. So where are we? Player bullet. So we could set up a player bullet sprite there. Um, I think we'd probably want to draw a new sprite for that. So let's do just, just Vertically mirror that. Yeah, the right mouse button isn't very good on this. Okay, so then we go to um, the script generator. And we go to the player bullet and we can define the sprite for the player bullet, left and right. Um, oh, the other thing we can do is change the other events at the same time. So let's just do that. Now that'll change any of the other scripts that need to be changed um, in order to make these work a little better. Um, but it will overwrite them if we click on that. But we'll we'll do that because we're, we're right at the start of the um, the project. So now we click generate scripts again, it prompts us again, yes we are sure, and then we go back into the events and have a look at the player event, and this time you'll see it's no longer using the laser, it's now using sprites, it's spawning a type, sprite type 3 with image 3. So <coughs> it's spawning our new bullet sprites. Um, let's look at the other events it's generated for us. Um, sprite type 1, um, that was the satellite sprite if you remember, and here's the code for the satellite. It basically sits there until it's uh, it touches the player um, and then it just orbits him. As you can see 
the data is down there at the bottom and that's how it orbits the player. Sprite type 2, um, the code has been generated automatically for us there. Uh, that's um, the player nasty that bounces around the screen and sprite type 3, it's generated the code for our bullets. So that's nice. So that's all there for us. Um, so let's check our screens are all looking good. Yep, that's fine. So all it remains to do, all that remains to be done is to export the source code now. And we um, export that to, let's call that temp. So it creates temp.agd. Uh, create assembler listing now, yes please. Now I've got mine set up to automatically build a binary as well, which should be there. So yes, there you can see we've created the temp.agd. We've got the temp.asm, which has been compiled by the compiler from the AGD. And then the assembler, I'm using SJASM Plus, um, has created a temp.bin for us in ZX code. So all I have to do now is go to the emulator. This is Fuse I'm using here. Um, load binary data, and I need to load temp.bin. Um, and it starts at address 24576. That's the usual starting address for a Spectrum game, by the way. You can change that in the source if you want. Okay, so we've now got the binary in memory. All we have to do is run it. We have our menu automatically created for us. It's even created redefined keys uh, code for us. So. It knows that there's only an up key, there's no down key because we're using the Rocketman controls. So we've got up, left, right, fire. It's given us a pause key as well. Uh, and then we just press one for keyboard. And there's our bouncing nasty, our player sprite at the top. who's shooting the nasties and then he picks up the satellite sprite and there we go. The player's all up and running with his little power up. And that's how you get started in multi-platform AGD.